Welcome everyone, my name is Dom and I want to take a moment to talk about the good old days and I want to talk about what uh, what this controls. Some of you may not even know what this is. This is a PlayStation 3, DualShock 3 controller. And I want to talk about not just this, but the PlayStation 3 itself. So let's get nostalgic about the good old days. Who knows what dastardly crime might perpetrate next? He's a very clever arch criminal who must be put away. Another innocent victim. I don't know. So for those of us old enough to remember, the PlayStation 3 originally launched in 2006. It had two price points, right? It was initially a $499 model and a $599 model, and that was just outrageous. However, the console basically had every technology you can ever imagine under the sun. It was kind of cool, right? Like a fully backwards compatible console, it had Wi-Fi, it had like SD card readers, a bunch of USB ports, and it was trying to be a supercomputer that was connected to your television. And the biggest thing that was unfortunate with the PlayStation 3 was the price because when Microsoft was coming out with the Xbox 360 slaying it at freaking $399, it made it tough for Sony to get those sales out. And Sony had the other issue of the console being really hard to develop for. You see, the PlayStation 3 was a complete transformation of the way that game consoles were going to function. It had eight core processing inside of it. At that time, dual core processors were like the whoa for like PC gaming. This thing was coming out with eight, technically seven, and then there was another one for redundancy. And then it had all these other little like elements per core that made it very complicated and you know very hard to develop for. But when you develop for the PlayStation 3, that console could just not fail. The games were surprisingly good looking. They're still surprisingly good looking, albeit the frame rate is a little rough and you can definitely see the PlayStation 3's age. I mean, this controller is no PlayStation 5 controller. To see the differences here, it's ridiculous in terms of size, in terms of comfort, but there's a nostalgia to this. This thing had the battery built in, and this thing had freaking Bluetooth, and, and it had the six axis, and you could do games like this, and Killzone, you would have to unlock stuff like that. It was super awesome. The PlayStation 3 was like kind of a big deal, and Sony really wanted you to know that. So they had this like epic commercial with this like floating demon baby thing that was like staring at it in a room. I just remember being like in high school, just like, oh my god, I, I don't know what this means, but I know that I wanted because it was so epic and they had like this glowing PlayStation 3 logo with like this deep bassy like brrr, brrr, brrr. it was so freaking cool and just like today the PlayStation 3 got scalped to consoles were selling on eBay for 1200 bucks but I managed to finally get my hands on one it was awesome I was so excited I didn't even have an HGTV at the time like I was still using like a CRT and even then the graphics just were just mind-boggling I mean some of the games that it launched with was like Motor Drive or Motor City is like a dirt game and you had like big monster trucks and you, you know you were just driving around on like quads but the first game that I owned was um, what's it called resistance fall of man that's the one it was a first-person shooter and it had online which is one of the one of the cool perks about the PlayStation 3 was that the online was free. Sony's implementation of PlayStation Network wasn't fantastic. It definitely was not as streamlined and polished as Xbox Live, but it was free. You can message your friends and friends list and all of that stuff like that. You, you can't talk about the PlayStation Network without talking about the outage. Sony got hacked. Like I remember booting up the PlayStation 3 and just couldn't sign in. It was like a day or two later. We had finally heard what had happened. And yeah, Sony got like hacked in by apparently a bunch of hackers who were pissed off at the fact that Sony had removed the Linux feature and were being like anti-consumer. They found a vulnerability in their servers. And apparently Sony was not running their game very well. Like, changing things like the PSN ID is a pain in the ass. Microsoft has been able to do that since the beginning. While they did later implement the ability to change your PlayStation name, you know, it came with consequences and weird stuff. And then as you move to the PlayStation 4, you only really have so many friends. So they're getting a lot better now, but you got to pay for it now is kind of the trade-off. Like back in the day, it was free. And eventually when they introduced PlayStation Plus, you still got to play online, but you would also get free games, which was like... And these weren't like cheap, crappy games. They were like genuinely like good games. I remember like Bioshock 2, and I, I think I have a bunch of them. And that's still a huge thing. There's like YouTube channels letting you know what games of the month are coming out. And oh my God, Microsoft later copied this feature and you get games with gold. And you know what? I think all for the better, like the PlayStation 3 just had a huge impact on the industry. Some of the other great things about the PS3 was you could upgrade the hard drive and not in the Microsoft way. No, in this regard, Sony just wanted to use like a standard two and a half inch hard drive. You find it a laptop, you just pop it out, pop it in, you format it, throw the software on there and you update it and you run it and then boom, you're good to go. Well, it didn't have the hot swap ability of the Xbox 360. The reality was is that it was significantly cheaper to get massive storage for your console. And I honestly prefer that implementation way better than those weird hard drive things that the Xbox 360 had. This is gonna be really, really 
goofy, but one of my favorite things though about the PS3 was the fact that it was a slot loaded console. PS1 had the, like, the, the lid thing, right? And then the PS2 and the Xbox, they had trays. The Xbox 360 had a tray, but the PS3, you had to slot that bastard in. It was a slot loaded disc tray and it was like the coolest thing. I don't know why. I guess like, like growing up as a kid, I would see my parents' cars, you know, they have the CD player and like, you know, I never got to put the CD in the slot there in the car. You know, they always had to do it. So for me to have my own slot that I can stick stuff in, you know what? A lot of things make sense now. Alongside other things with the PlayStation 3, it was a Blu-ray player and it had the cross media bar. So it was trying to be like what the Xbox One was trying to be. You threw your Blu-ray movie in there. You had some MPEG for your pictures. You had music. You had your streaming services later on. It had some other cool little features too, which never panned out well. Things like remote play with your PSP and you know, over Wi-Fi. It never worked well with a really close direct sight to the console. It's not nearly as good as it is today. But all in all, the PlayStation 3 always felt very robust and a little un optimized the PlayStation Store being clunky and laggy and surprisingly you know with the recent debacle of Sony wanted to close down the PlayStation 3 store and PlayStation Vita store people were complaining that they want to use their PlayStation 3 and that shows because while I was doing a little bit of research for how I want to talk about PlayStation 3 the biggest thing that people are looking for right now is how to play PlayStation 3 games be it emulation or be it on a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5 and unfortunately Sony kind of f***ed themselves because even though the cell processor was revolutionary the games are just not easy to emulate. You basically need a cell processor to be able to run those games. Yes, there is some emulation coming out, and yes, they kind of work, but the complexities involved with the instructions and the way that that processor works, it's just so inconceivable to, to write software to try to emulate that. What I would have loved to have seen is like Sony adding another slot somewhere on the PlayStation 5 where you could just buy an expansion card and it gives you PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility. It just holds all the processors, and then all the instructions and stuff from the games just get run off that that would be a really cool way to do that but unfortunately right now we're running out of ways to play those old playstation 3 games yes you can do playstation the sony's playstation now it's 720p gaming it's not the same as taking your disc throwing it in the console and being able to play it the way that you used to and realistically speaking this could be done the cell processor when it first came out as powerful as it was was the size of a postage stamp it's amazing how far technology has come so this seems like something sony would have been able to do because unfortunately too there are some games playstation 3 games that are just not on the playstation store i recently wanted to play final fantasy 13. I know 13 was not loved by a lot of people, but it's not on the PlayStation Store. And Microsoft doesn't have this problem. They are going through and like reconstructing all the old Xbox 360 games and they're running them in emulation locally, but it's easier for them to do because the Xbox 360 was built off of a more PC-like architecture. But the PlayStation 3 is an outlier. It's different in all of this. It's complicated in ways that other consoles aren't. And there are just times where I just want to boot up an old PS3 game, more than even PlayStation 2, which is what I basically grew up playing, PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. At that time, PlayStation 2 could play PlayStation 1 games, but PlayStation 3, that big fat PlayStation 3 model that had the PlayStation 2 Emotion Engine and the original PS1 processor, and that's a gem. And unfortunately, it's just becoming harder and harder to find these consoles. It's becoming harder and harder to be able to experience that part of gaming history. Even random little things like PlayStation Home, for anybody who remembers PlayStation Home, you just roam around and do crap. You're just a 3D model. You know, just the idea that you could just kind of just do whatever with the PS3, especially when they at one point had the ability to run Linux on the thing. But unfortunately, they got rid of that because people were figuring out ways to hack the thing. And eventually, people got into it. But that was like the gold standard during the old school console wars with Xbox 360. Like why the PS3 was better if you were on the PlayStation side. You know, you would talk about the cell processor and how it didn't have Red Ring of Death. And they'd bring back Yellow Light of Death. It's like, I never saw Yellow Light of Death. I've owned like four PlayStation 3s. I've never seen a Yellow Light of Death. I just remember like all those good times that the PlayStation 3 brought, and I wanted to make this video to really reminisce about those things, you know? And if you have never experienced the PlayStation 3 generation, if you can somehow get your hands on one, there is a lot to be had there. And unlike a lot of the like old games from the 90s and stuff, right, it's, it's a lot easier to play the older games because the graphics are good enough that you don't need to have nostalgia about the games to be able to enjoy them. PlayStation 3 is right in that sweet spot where it's like old enough to still feel kind of vintage, but it's not unbearable when you play it. And I wish they would find a way to maybe like even allow like the PlayStation 3 over Ethernet or USB somehow, some way, give us a hardware level ability to be able to re-experience all of those things from the PlayStation 3 or just re-release the PlayStation 5 with like full backwards compatibility. PlayStation 5 Pro, the full 
PlayStation experience. I'd really like to see that. And if you would too, I'd really appreciate you throwing a like on this video, guys. I really would. And if you guys like this series, let me know because I have many other like game consoles and phones and what have you from a long time ago that I'd love to dig into. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you guys thought of this one. So let me know down below. Please consider sharing the video. I say it all the time. It helps the channel out a lot. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and check out any of the other content. I do a bunch of random crap on this channel. And as always, talk to you soon.